I want to welcome everybody back to the poker vlog. My name is Yale Greenfield, aka The Live King. We've got an awesome poker session for you guys today. But before we get into the poker, myself, producer Jamie, and a friend of ours, Ryan, reviewed four of the top burger spots in all of Los Angeles. The review was a little bit longer than we anticipated. So if you want to skip ahead to the poker, feel free to use the chapters to do so. We are doing LA Burger Review today. We got three of us on this. Producer Jamie, he's shooting the filming. We got Ryan, fellow poker player and extravagant eater. This guy eats more than anybody I fucking know. We're gonna start off at Gold Burger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby. All right, first go here, we chop this bad boy up. This is the classic. At Gold Burger, it's grass-fed beef, American cheese, and the, the onions are griddled into the into the burger when they make it. They're not added, so they're grilled right into the patty. Let's give this a go. Mmm, very good. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Wait, is that hot or how good it is? The combination, oh my God, it's so good. Instead, it almost has a cheesesteak vibe, the way the American cheese melts into the smash patty. Very good. Uh, Gold burger time. The big difference here, everything's kind of the same. You got your pickles, you got your onions, you got your grass fed beef, but we've got a mustard aioli now to uh, go with it, which I guess is kind of like the signature thing about the burger here. A little less unique. Oh, it's super good. Yeah, that mustard aioli's pretty muted. Like it's even more muted than like a in and out burger sauce. I don't know where the, the, the mustard part really is coming from. Definitely not bad, but it's just fine. Good, good quality burger overall, both of them. Ratings. Yeah, I'm gonna go Gold Burger 6.5 and Classic 7.5. But I'm also gonna be prone to under ranking the Smash Burger probably. Smash is my least favorite type of burger typically. We also have the fries which we're just kind of like, we're not gonna really be like super hard rating the fries, I don't think, we just. Stop number two, Moose Craft Barbecue in Lincoln Heights in Los Angeles area. I'm excited for this place because in most of the reviews I've read, people have this ranked as their number one burger in LA. So we know it's gonna be unique. All right, we had a little problem here. We're in line, I see the lady walk up to a big roll of paper, <laughs> writes two words on the board. Thick burger, parentheses, sold out at 4.30 p.m. Yeah, so we had to get the barbecue. And here's the news on the barbecue. Pork rib, best pork rib in LA, no doubt. Probably our number two rib. We still think the colossal beef rib at uh, APL is the best rib. Holy shit. Peppery? It is peppery. The burger is yeah. too That's melting. Oh my God. That's a good rib. Unreal. How's the brisket? Brisket, best in LA. Brisket. Br brisket. The brisket was phenomenal. I thought like I was in in uh, in the south. I'm gonna. Give, I gotta give the pork rib a 9.5. For me, brisket wasn't as good as for them. I'm gonna. I'll give it a. I'll give it a nine. Wow. Where are we going next, guys? Yeah, the brisket. Fanboy, boy, baby. Brisket. We're gonna stop number three. Amboy boy, quality meats. Right here. Boom. Oh, there it is. This looks good. Yeah. I thought it was your real voice at first. Nah, man, ain't my real voice. <laughs> I mean, you never know my real voice. Not gonna find out. I'm not this man. Here's how we do it. You uh, you pick your patty, you pick your toppings. We got the classy patty, that's smash. Slim thick patty is a third of a pound, like an old school restaurant burger. Nice and juicy. The DH patty is 10 ounces. You got dry aged ribeye in there. Uh, we cook it by basing it in garlic oil first, put a crust on it. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so this is the fancy Bang. fancy DA. That one's beautiful. And what classic double fries. This is the Amboy Classic. That is fucking insane. This is a normal Jura burger spot. This is a butchery. And it essentially has high-end steak turned into burger. I made mean, just no flavor. Chuck, burger sauce, grilled onions, pickles. Well, that's really good. 
Very uh, meaty, savory. Good bun. Mm -hmm. They call this one the DH something. Provolone, garlic aioli. We got this dry aged beef. That's what I'm excited about. Oh yeah, meaty. Those umami, earthy tones in that dry age, right? Well said. That's yeah, excellent. Mm -hmm. Dry aged ribeye. This is my type of burger. I like when there's a sweat, if whether or not my mouth will be big enough to get in there. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amboy ratings. Dude, that guy was, that, that, that guy's too nice. I can't, I, I have to give it like a 10 because he's so fucking nice. Yeah, the owner album who has a show I've never heard of called The Burger Show. He knows burgers, easily best smash burger I've ever had. I'm gonna have to agree with these guys. The chef was the nicest guy ever. I told him I'm getting ready to head to Dallas. He said, follow me on Instagram, DM him, hook it up. Yeah, it was a really fun experience. Got to hear his whole story. As far as the ratings for the burger goes, I surprisingly like the smash a lot better than the dry age. Dry age, I'm gonna give 7.9. Smash, I'm gonna give 8.8. .8. That probably is the best smash I've ever had before. It could maybe even justify higher on a smash only scale. You could give him a 7.9 and then DM him for advice. Maybe that's a bad idea. <laughs> I think I think the burger's fantastic. It's the best thick boy I've had in Los Angeles. Better I don't know. Maybe I can amend it. I mean, maybe it's like an eight one. I just I don't know. My my, my expectations might have been too high on the dry age ribeye. It was all very good. Maybe how about the French fries? French fries, whatever. I don't know. No, better than gold burger. We're learning something here. Don't order the fries, right? The burger sauce. Yeah, well, yeah the, the fish fries. Water, all these fish that watch our show want to order French fries, like because they're fish. That's what fish do. What is this place called? Everson, Everson Royce Bar. Stop number four. This is against our last one, just because we're getting full. You gotta go with open mind to every single spot. Right. Everson Royce Bar is the same as, like, we were walking in here on empty stomachs. This guy's so disciplined. Hey, I take the things that matter seriously. What percentage hungry are you right now? I'm 55% full. Well, you, you got a lot of room. Oh yeah, there's a lot of room. I'm at about 80 to 85% full. Same. Let's eat another we've been, we've been out. Well, we've got breaking news from Everson Royce Bar. We finally found good fries today. Kennebec fries. Come on. No problem. Enjoy. Oh. Yeah. Well, wow, maybe not what you'd expect. Not what you'd expect. A little plain Jane. Yeah. That was the way we played. A little boring. A little boring compared to the last few we had. But all together, it comes together well. I mean, I do like the meat. Yeah. Oh, well, do we got more? Thank you. I mean, it's solid. I think it's solid. We didn't come here for the patty milk. Last burger of the day. Does it count as a burger? It is. Fuck in. yeah, it counts as a burger. Patty milk's a greatest burger. Mm. I like it better. I think it works well with a single patty. Yeah. Between the two, I go patty milk. I mean, I've always loved patty melts. Jalapeno on patty melt? Mm. That's where it's at. All right, let's talk you know? food. Let's talk food. Why? You don't want to hear about how I reported a euro to a fucking government agency? I don't think we should air that one. Okay. Not unless it's really funny or relevant. I mean, it's just true. I don't know if it's funny. Final stop was Royce Bar. I gotta say, it's really hard to be unbiasedly judging when you're getting full. So Everson Royce Bar, I think, gets the lowest rating of the four. Obviously. They're, uh, but if we had it first in a different reality, what would have happened? I think if we did the entire thing in reverse, we would have given the lowest rating to Goldberger. Nah. You don't think so? Not for me. Not for you. I'm not gonna penalize them as hard for the simplicity, although I'll admit it didn't have a lot going on outside of the burger. I like the burger patty. I thought it had good flavor. I'm gonna give the regular burger a six. And on the patty melt, simply because it had jalapenos, which maybe that's fish of me, I'm gonna give it a 6.5. All right, uh, burger crawl complete, sort of. Because we didn't get to try the Moose Craft Burger, which if we want to judge by their barbecue, probably, I feel like it's top two at the end of the day of the burgers. Yeah, it'd be competing with Amboy, yeah. Yeah, for me, burgers clearly Amboy number one. Goldberger number two, Everson number three, 
I agree. Although, I think you guys are sleeping on Gold Burger slightly. I thought that burger was very good. And I think Everson Royce Bar is like borderline criminal to be on these like best of lists online. Maybe they're just doing it because they they like that that back patio scene. Yeah, it's a cool spot. Good service. Service good was vibe. service was good. Good ambiance. I would yeah. go there again. Yeah, the Amboy guy doesn't use any PR. Yeah, he, does, he, he, he does all word of mouth. Overall, good day. Oh, he just burger crawled. Is there a better day? I think I ate four thousand calories, which that's not good, but whatever. Sometimes you gotta you gotta sacrifice. All right, that's it for this food review today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I think we're going to uh, where was your session? We're going to it's a dual session. It's gardens. It's gardens bike with a with a detour in the middle. I got some I got some B-roll you don't know about in there. All right, we're going to HG for some poker. 1020 no limit. Let's go. We made the one hour drive out to the Gardens Casino from LA, and this first hand is gonna be 1020 no limit with a $40 straddle. The hijack opens the $90. He's an ex-professional who wisened up and started his own business. The cutoff's got a three bet in hand. He's made it 240 to go. We've been playing at the table for about 30 minutes, and I've established that the cutoff is probably a fish. We've got the third best hand in poker, two ladies, and the setup here is Hijack and I are 2400 effective, and the cutoff started the hand 1540 total. So the decisions here are, do we just shoot it all in, or do we go for a three bet, knowing that if the Hijack were to continue with a five bet, that I would actually probably fold these two queens as crazy as it sounds. 600. And I eventually settle on a four bet of 600. In hindsight, I think this was probably an error. Not sure how big a one, think going all in just is the best thing we can possibly do. The hijack quickly folds, and now the action's back on the cutoff player. He's cutting those black chips. Sort of seems like he's not too happy about the spot if I were to give my live read. But then he puts in the call. We've got an SPR well below one, with 1350 in the middle and a king 7-3 two heart one diamond flop. We've got that queen of hearts in hand. Ugh, this is kind of gross. Do we go for a small bet or a check? I didn't know. I do settle on a small bet, 260. <laughs> That's a snap all in from the cutoff. Kind of gross here. Does that mean you have it when you call for it? So does that mean you have it when you call for it? Look at this guy cutting out the cash, readying the rebuy. Again, this tell could be either way. Some people are super, super honest about it. Other people are trying to reverse you. I don't think it matters a lot here. Price is price. Again, another spot on the flop that probably was an error. Maybe I should just be check calling it off here. SPR is really low. Put myself into a funny spot pre-flop. Now I've gone with the call, just kind of hoping that this guy took the bait. Maybe he's got jacks or tens or some kind of heart draw or he's bluffing. I don't know. We're going to get a turn here. It's a jack of hearts, so we got a heart draw and a deuce of clubs on the river. He's got two rockets. Faked us out pre-flop a little bit. Not that it mattered. Called for the rebuy. Every move in the live poker book. Nice hand him. We're stuck about 1300 at this point in the session when we pick up two tens in the cutoff. The game has tightened up a little bit, so we go with an open size of $50. It's gonna fold to the small blind top left corner of your screen here. He's playing a ton of hands, but three betting almost never, and he's made it 210 to go. Feels a little bit gross. You've been pretty quiet over there. Well, I'm gonna give you a jingle. Let's see what happens. As I put in the call, you hear a little chat about me saying he's been quiet. No joke, this guy did something I've never seen before. He took a missed blind button in a 15 minute nap about 30 minutes ago. In any event, we're off to the flop, 754 rainbow, and now our man's bet 275 into 440. I don't think I wanna raise facing this size or this guy in particular, because he's been mostly passive. 275 a sign of strength. I'm gonna call and see one more. And it's a queen of diamonds. Hoping this man slows down. 
He doesn't want to. It's a huge bet of 550, and I instantly put it in the muck. We've got our absolute favorite hand here, Ace King in the low jack. We open to 60, and this one's gonna fold all the way around to the big blind. He's the villain from the first hand of the day where we got wrecked with two queens. He's run a stack from 1,500 to 8,000, but he's mostly done it by sort of treating this like a table game and not poker. He's just wildly gambling all over the place. He puts in the call and it's a king nine three rainbow flop. That gives us top pair boss kicker. He checks. We start with a small bet of 45. Facing this bet, I never expect this guy in particular to fold. He's gonna oblige here. He wants to see a turn. 10 of clubs, eh, not the best. He checks, and here, I think, yeah, maybe we could bet sometimes. We started with a small bet, but checking sometimes is good for deception as well, and that's what we do this time. Six of clubs on the river. Now our guy reaches for that slot machine handle and pulls it to the tune of 150. I think raising is a little too thin here. Yeah, we've got a really good hand, but he can have tons of two pairs and other stuff we quickly call. And he mucks it face down. Didn't even have showdown value. I'm hoping to build on the positive momentum that I built from the last hand when I look down at ace queen off in the cut. We've got an open to 60 from a pro in the hijack. This is going to be an automatic three bet. We go for $200. It's folded to the small blind. This is the napping guy. As I said earlier, he likes to play a lot of hands and he looks quite interested. He eventually cold calls and that's going to give the hijack a really good price. He's going to come along as well and it's a three way three bet pot. These are very tricky situations. We get an amazing flop of a seven deuce, two spades. They both quickly check. We're just going to have the best of it near always here. We start with a better 220 and that is going to elicit two snap folds from the small blind and the hijack. We're just a touch late to film here, so let me catch you up. We've opened a $60 with ace king off in the low jack. The hijack, a very passive player who seems to be on mega tilt, has called. And the big blind, the guy who likes to nap mid-session, has called as well. Three of us hit this flop, and it's king 8 six rainbow. Somehow, we've got top pair, top kicker yet again. Big blind checks. We start with a bet of 120 here. Typically, I'd probably go something like 70 to $90 on a board like this when I'm sitting in the middle when I bet. But neither of these guys have shown any interest in folding in the last couple hours. And this situation's no different. They've both put in the call. Hoping the dealer puts out a massive brick. And yes, three of clubs. That is very, very nice. Big blind checks. And now I have to think a little bit. We've got a situation. The hijack only has 550. The big blind and I are about 3,300 effective or so. Go there, man. I put out 375. Now the hijack has to consider, does he want to commit his stack or not? Apparently he wants to commit 375 of the 550. Big blind's gonna get out of the way. We're gonna go heads up to this river with the hijack having almost nothing left behind. Deuce of clubs, so backdoor clubs come in, but it doesn't matter at this point. We go all in effective 175. He insta calls and he cannot beat our kings with an ace kicker. $1,600 pot our way. All right, guys, mid-session update. Life's getting in the way today. I'm meeting a friend up in Anaheim, which is 30 minutes from the gardens, to go to an Angels game. Never been to an Angels game before. So we're gonna get a little bit of poker in today, get a little bit of baseball. The plan is after the baseball game, which starts at about 6.30 local time, probably come back to gardens and try to finish this little session off. All right, we left the Angels game. Good times, I haven't been to a baseball game in quite a while. Gardens had two 10-20 games running when I left. Neither of them were running when I got back to my car at the Angels game. And I checked, there were a couple games running at Hustler, talked to a friend of mine, he said they were kind of whatever. 
So there's one game running at the bike. I've said this before in past vlogs that it's really died down. Bike used to have like three five tens on a Friday, at least two. Right now there's one with a short list. I'm gonna go check out this game. We're up $82 somehow from gardens earlier. This has been a hell of a Friday. Say I started my commute at about 11, played like four hours at gardens, drove to Anaheim, left Anaheim, drove down here to the bike. And now we're gonna get a little more action in. Let's get inside, see what they got going for us. Looking around at this table at the bike, I see zero pros. So this is a welcome sight. We look down at two eights about 30 minutes into the session here and raise it to 60 from the low jack in a 510 20 configuration. Small blind cuts out the call, he's in there. He's a wreck, he's been in nearly every pot since I got to this table. We're gonna go heads up to this flop of four three deuce all clubs. He insta checks. And here, he's gonna have a lot of flushes, a lot of over pairs, but he's got big Broadway stuff like that too. Thus, I start with a bet of $50, looking to give my pocket eights some protection. He flicks in the call, and the turn's a deuce of diamonds. Small blind checks in flow. We have a decision, but I think with two eights specifically, again, we wanna protect. Yeah, he's got us beat sometimes with over pairs, but he can have pocket fives, pocket sixes, pocket sevens, ace of clubs, king of clubs. We go with exactly 125 into 250. Small blinds undeterred, he calls. Okay. <laughs> Rivers and ace of hearts. That means any five beats us, any ace beats us. He checks and we take our showdown check back quickly. He announces just the king of clubs. We show our two eights for the best hand. That's two streets of pretty nice value on this board. I've been folding for the last hour leading into this hand, but I have been observing what's going on at the table. Here we've got a hijack open to 60. We've got 9-8 of diamonds on the button and go for the call. This is not a play I would make all the time, but the hijack specifically is somebody I'm looking to get involved with. I'm not seeing a lot of his hands, but most of the things he's doing don't seem to make sense to me. We go heads up to this flop of king seven six one diamond. That's a quick check from the hijack. And here, with an open ender and a backdoor flush draw, this is one of our best semi-bluffing combos. We go $60. Quick call from the hijack, and that means we're obviously behind at this point. He can have some Miss Broadways like Ace Queen or Ace Jack, but he's got pairs, other stuff too. We get an eight of hearts turn. Now that gives us a pair in an open ender. And look at this top right of your screen. He shoots out two blacks and a green chip for 225 into 275. I was not expecting this. And I can't tell you I have any idea what it means. Maybe he trapped a hand like two kings or two sevens or two sixes that flopped a set. And now he's trying to protect it. Maybe he's bluffing. I have zero clue what this is. We've got plenty of good hands in range ourselves, and put in the call with this pair and open ender. Nine of hearts on the river, that gives us two pair, but it also brings in a backdoor flush and a one liner to a straight. I'm really hoping he checks here so I don't have to put on the cape and I can just get to showdown. He checks and that's gonna leave us with near zero decision. I don't think he would check a straight or a flush too frequently, but I think this board is just a little too dangerous. I check it back and check this one out. The 6-5 offsuit. So he opens 6-5-0 from hijack, very loose. Check calls a pair, leads on an eight where he turns the sucker and open ender and just gets there on the river and H him. In this one, the hijack has open limped, the small blinds completed, and we've got the gorgeous Jack 10 of diamonds in the big blind. 125. We shoot it up to 125. Straddle folds. Action's back on the hijack. Too rich for him. The small blind doesn't hesitate at all. Quickly puts in 105 more. And we're off to a flop. Heads up. And bang, nine, eight, seven, two clubs and a diamond. We've got the stones. Small blind checks. And here, the board's relatively dynamic. I start with 150. 
Small blind flicks in the call. We get a queen of clubs turn. That kind of sucks. Bit of an action killer. He checks. He's got plenty of flushes in range. I check it back. I don't think this is a hand that can get three streets. Four of hearts on the river. And small blind checks. Well, most recreationals, which this guy is, probably going to fire out the flush here. They're not going to stay protected heading to the river when they check. That means we have the effective nuts. So when thinking of sizing, I go for 450, trying to look as polar as possible. I want to make it seem like I've got some bluffs here when I go bet, check, bet. That's how I settle on this $450 bet. Our opponent is out of screen here. He's on my direct right, but he's definitely in agony trying to decide if he wants to call. Hard to think he's got a hand like top pair, like a queen. He could have like 10-9 or maybe even a 9-8 or an 8-7 that just like didn't raise the flop, but wanted to call pre. Irregardless, I'm really hoping for a call here. He does put it in and gets the bad news, pushing his cards forward and earning ourselves a $1,475 pot. We're finally digging out of this hole on this very long two casino day. Now we're running hot in this session. Let's keep it going with this 10-7 of spades on the button. It folds around to us. 60. We open to 60. Small blind calls. He and I have been very friendly. He claims to play big private games with some of the people you see on Hustler Casino Live, but he only bought in for $1,000, tripled up very quickly, and has been on complete lock for the last couple of hours. Let's keep that in mind when we get to this flop. And it's king seven, six rainbow. That gives us middle pair. When he checks, I think checking would be okay. And also betting small would be fine. We go for the small bet of 45. And we get a call from the small blind. Turns a three of hearts. Small blind checks. When I'm going through my progression here of what I want to do, I don't think the small blind really calls five, four suited pre. I also think he has plenty of weak hands that will peel 45, but won't call a really big bet. 250. So I turn this 10-7 into a bluff and shoot 250 into 240. I don't believe you, man. There go. He doesn't believe us, but he believes us enough to fold. It's been a long day of poker. Let's finish off strong. We've got two 10s in the low jack, facing a $60 open from middle position. We three bet to 200. The opener here is the same guy from the Jack-10 of Diamonds hand. He's pretty passive. He plays open limps. So when he raises, we should take note of it. It raises some alarm bells, but all in all, I prefer three betting to flatting. He calls, and we're once again off to a flop. Heads up. It's ace, nine, deuce, two spades, one diamond. He checks to us in flow. And here, I think checking could be okay. But betting tens for protection, especially without a spade, makes sense to me. I go a little too small here, maybe only 100 into 435. And that's going to get him quickly calling. But look at this. Tennis spades on the turn. We've got middle set, but a flush is also in now. He checks. I think this is worthy of a bet, but we are running out of value. I go for 225. Facing a raise we could call, but it doesn't come to that. He folds, and it's a strong ending to the day. Let's kick it over to me for some thoughts on this session. All right, little walk to the car out here at the bike. We're all done. 2.30 a.m. local time. It's a successful day. I did a lot. Drove all the way to Hawaiian Gardens in Orange County. Got to see some faces I haven't seen before. Some different shit. I didn't know what that was. Slamming his trunk. Drove to Anaheim. That's the furthest outside of LA I've ever been. Angels game was fun, it's a good time. And then over to the bike, Old Faithful. Game was all right. It's just like a game where like you're gonna redline a lot. Like basically just like win a lot of uncontested pots. There's money to win in that game and it's a lower variance game, but you're not gonna have the huge, huge pots that you sometimes see in, in games with more action. Uh, a vlog watcher came up, he's super friendly. And then he started talking to me about like what's going on in poker vlogs. And he said, you know, he was kind of sick of the same old hand vlogs. And, you know, funny enough, I've been thinking like, well, what else could I do? Like, we got the food. I like the food. I'm passionate about it. It's fun. But how do we spice these vlogs up a little bit? So I guess I'm going to ask you guys, what is it that you want to see? Do you guys 
like the hands? Do you like a little bit more lifestyle shit? If you have any ideas for Jamie and I, stuff that you'd like to see, drop it in the comments. Everybody knows, like, I went to Denver and played poker. I went to Miami and played poker. I play poker in LA. I go to Vegas. I do this, I do that. It's cool. You get to see different locations. But is there other things that you would like to see related to the professional gambling lifestyle or gambling in general? Are there things that you want to know uh, that I am not adequately conveying to you? We would like to try some new stuff and we're trying to come up with some ideas ourselves. Anyway, let's get to these results. We were in for 4K at the gardens, out for $4,082, profit of 82. Over here at the bike, we were in for 3,000 and we were out for 4,182 for a profit of 1,182. That's a pretty good day. Yeah, I'm feeling good about it. Really glad to be back in LA. Fuck Vegas. Hate Vegas. I actually didn't even address the tournaments, but you know what? The spreadsheet's up there. I think we lost, the package lost like 13K. So the package lost like 16% total. Uh, it returned 84% to investors. In tournaments, that's really not that bad. It just is what it is. And don't forget to drop those ideas in the comments below. Tell me what you wanna see. I really want your feedback. This is a potential inflection point for this vlog. I need to stop talking. Life King out.